Hey, what's up, everybody? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Pearlside Church. We're going to get right into God's Word. And so open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4. Um, if you don't have a Bible, it's up on the screen. We're going to start in verse 18. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 22, and this is where it starts. It says, One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, throwing a net into the water, for they have fished for a living. Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. What? Isn't that kidnapping? That's weird. And they left their nets at once and followed him. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting on a boat, sitting on a boat, with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called to them to, called them to come too. They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, that this is your word. Lord, it's not just text that we're reading, but you're reading us as we open up this text. And so, God, I pray that every heart that's here, every individual that's here to hear your word, let it be one that would challenge us, maybe even convict us. But in the end, I pray that it would be one that would encourage us to live relentlessly after you in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. And so for me, you know, like uh, Jenny and I, we've been married for about four years now. In September, we make four years. And um, one thing I wanted to share about is when we first got married, we lived with my parents for about a week. And then after that week was done, I was like, I cannot live with my family. I need to go find my own place with my wife and we got to live on our own. And so came the day that I was going to not sleep in my old home and then sleep in my new apartment. And so right when I left, all of a sudden, I just started to cry. <laughs> I was just weeping. And I was like, why am I crying? And I was like thinking about it. Man, Scripture says that a man should leave his mother and father and cleave on to his wife. And for me, that was a season where I was like, man, Lord, I'm moving from singlehood into married life. And it's a whole brand new life. And I'm like cutting myself off from my family. And my family is still my family. They're just not my primary family anymore. They're my secondary family. Another thing that happened recently too, we had a son, of course. Some of you guys may know. His name is Azil. He's two years old. And last week, he started preschool for the first time. And for us, we were like, yes, like go, go to preschool. We want you to have fun. We want you to learn. And if you stay with us, it's going to be hard because we got to work with you. We got to have you with us at all times. Um, but the first day that we sent him, uh, he starts around like 7 o'clock. And then we pick him up around like 4, the latest 5.30, right? And it dawned on me. I was like, man, a typical Monday through Friday, I only see him for three hours total out of the whole day. Because once you pick him up, the latest maybe 5.30, we take him home, we feed him, we bathe him. Our boy goes to sleep at 7. We're like, man, we barely even get to see you. So we live for the weekends now when it comes to our son. And, um, you know, one thing I'm learning is that it's, it's a whole new territory for me. It's a whole new experience for me. And it's one that's very, very uncomfortable because I miss my son, you know. Like, I love him being around with him. I love going to pick him up from school and being with him, spending time with him. And he's just, you know, a joy to my wife and I. But it's a very uncomfortable thing. And I believe that sometimes that's how it is with God. He calls us into some very uncomfortable things. And sometimes it's on our journey of faith and following God, there's a lot of things that God is actually constantly calling us out of. Many of us, we've been walking with the Lord for many years. Some of us, maybe you're here for the very first time. God is a God that's going to constantly call us out of comfort. And we have to get used to that. And if you guys have been walking with God for a while, like myself, you know exactly what I'm talking about. God never wants us to settle. God never wants us to be comfortable. And I believe when we read this scripture about when Jesus first called the first disciples, he's calling them out of comfort and into calling. And so first point in your notes, number one, responding to the call of Jesus requires us to leave something behind. Turn to your neighbor and say, leave something behind. Yes. All right, verse 19. Jesus called to them, come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. 
Moving on to verse 22, the other two guys, right? They immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. Following Jesus always requires for us to leave something behind. God doesn't want us to just stay where we're at and be comfortable where we're at, but he's always calling us into the next thing that he has for us. And let's talk about this right now. When Jesus calls us, when God calls us into a relationship with him, he doesn't want just surface level relationship, like as if he's just an acquaintance to us or he's just the guy that we read about in the Bible. Imagine if me and Jenny got married and I told Jenny like, yeah, I'll just religiously marry you. What? Would she marry me? Absolutely not, right? Because why? We got married because we have relationship with each other. From this day, from the moment we got married, September 18th, uh, September 1st, 2018, I'm still getting to know her. For those of you who are married, you've been married for years, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You think you know your wife, but you don't. You think you know your spouse, but you don't. And I, I heard from um, just uh, scientifically, they say that you don't actually really start to get to know your spouse until 15 years of marriage. I was like, what? So my marriage is like the age of a toddler and we have so many more years to go to actually start knowing each other. Nonetheless, of course, my wife and I, we know each other. But it, was, it wasn't something that was easy for us to just simply walk into. But it's something that we loved, something that we desire to have and share with one another. God wants to have that same relationship with you. The kind of intimacy that a husband and a wife would have with one another. God wants to meet you here tonight. And he, he desires that relationship. And so maybe you've been coming to our church for a while. And you're like, man, I know exactly what you're talking about. But now you're thinking, oh, okay, where is my relationship with God though? Where am I really in connection with him? Is it really true that it's there? Or is this just a religion that I decided to pick up on and I just dabble with it? I believe God is moving us to a deeper level of relationship with him. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Well, for me, when I came to faith, I was actually seven years old. I was coming to Pearlside Church since 1999. So I've been here at Pearlside for a very, very long time. Growing up, hearing God's word, learning about what you need to do, like you need to get water baptized, you need to tithe. I think I actually have a picture of me when I first got water baptized. We can throw that picture up. Um, I was a, yeah, so cute, yeah, like little boy, so cute. But I was seven years old, and I came to church because my parents brought me to Pearlside Church. How many of you guys, you've come to church because your parent, your auntie, your uncle, or someone brought you to church? Show of hands, yeah? Right, well, so that's kind of a lot of us. And so for me, I've been walking with the Lord for about 23 years now, and it's been such a long journey, but it's never been perfect. And in fact, I would venture to say, it took me 13 years of following God to actually start a true, deep, and meaningful relationship with Him. I had relationship with Him, but I wasn't pursuing after Him. I was seeking after God, but I wasn't seeking for my God, but I was seeking for what He can give to me. And some of us, maybe that's where we're at in our journey. 13 years. Like, what? Pastor Sean, I've only been following God for like one year. Like, 13 years. But I believe that now hearing a testimony like mine and testimony we're going to hear later today, that you don't have to wait X amount of years for you to start this deep and meaningful relationship with God. God is here tonight. He wants to meet you. He wants to help you change and transform into the man and the woman that he's called you to be. But it starts with us saying, God, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. And when you start walking with the Lord, you're like, okay, what does following God look like then you start to realize whoa there's so many things that's in my life that God wants to deal with oh I don't know if I can continue walking in this journey of faith I know for a lot of us sometimes we come to faith in the beginning because there's a need right some of us came to, to came to God because I went through a breakup or some of us we came to God because I had a financial burden that I needed God to just kind of like intervene or maybe I had bad relationships with my parents and I felt like I was like at my last straw we came to God and it's good. I'm glad that we came to God on tough circumstances and I believe that for some of us you've experienced actually God's blessing in our lives. But the moment that we continue to follow God then God starts to help us take inventory in our lives and realize ooh, that, that doesn't align with God's word. 
this is challenging me to move on into healing. And this is challenging me to go beyond what I'm normal, uncomfortable with. And I believe that's exactly what the scripture is talking about. God is trying to call his disciples, us, into the next thing that he has for us. But it has to be our resolve to say, God, I'm willing to leave something behind. We could leave that photo up or we can, we can take it down too. But that's me, little, little seven-year-old. All right. Uh, Point number two, the depth of our relationship with God reflects to our dedication to follow him. This is what it says in Romans 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. You're alive, but you're sacrificing your life. Holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Worship is not just singing songs and lifting your hands, but it's how we live. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Like I said in the beginning, many of us, right, we came because we had a need. But when we continue to follow God, we realize that coming to God is not about God giving us what we want and what we need in life. But coming to God... He he actually gave us what we needed so that we can have a relationship with him. And once we come into a deep, meaningful relationship with God, guess what happens? He challenges us to live for him, to live as a living sacrifice, as it says in verse 22. So my question for us is, where are we at tonight? What has God been calling us to leave behind, to live as a living sacrifice so that we can live in the perfect will that he has for us? Because we could be doing a bunch of things, right? But not really necessarily having that relationship with him. When I used to work in construction, the term that we would use, yeah, I worked construction. It doesn't look like it, right? But the term we would use is called wasted motion. You guys ever heard of that? It's like you're making like you're doing something, but you're not really doing anything. Like you're, and my dad, he was my boss. Well, he wasn't really like on the field with me, but he'd be like, what are you doing? That's wasted motion right there. Because it made it seem like I was doing things. It made it seem like, God, oh man, I'm going to small group. Check off the list. God, I'm going to service. I'm doing all the religious things that you want me to. But how come it hasn't yet translated into a personal deep relationship with you? The kind of intimacy like we talked about between a husband and a wife. Let me ask us, where are we tonight? Where is God leading us and challenging us to leave our comfort so that we can grab a hold to what God has has for us, his his, uh, loving and perfect will for our lives? And what I've learned is for me when I was, right, uh, when I first was seven years old, I was just, okay, I attend church. I experienced Jesus, like, cool. Like, I felt God's presence in worship or I felt him at a camp. And then it leads into, um, Sean, you need to go to small group. Sean, make sure you're in weekly services. Oh, you just got a job? Make sure you're tithing 10% of what God has asked you to. And I did all of those things because it was my religion. But I didn't understand yet the heart of why God wanted me to do those things. See, Jesus, he hasn't come down to earth to make religious converts. Like, oh, do this, do that, to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus came for us to break sin off of our life to help us find healing so that we can live in relationship with him. But not only that, so that we can live the life that God has designed for us. So many times as believers, we just settle for just enough. Or we say, God, that's uncomfortable. That's way too uncomfortable. That's beyond me, Lord. I just want to stay right here. Like, let me just have what I want right here and I'm good. But many times, how many of us believe that and know that when we stay in comfort for too long, God just kicks us, right? Like, okay, you want to stay here? I'll give you a reason to move from where you are so I can call you into what, what I've called you to be in. God loves us so much. I, w- I don't want to get share the wrong message that he's condemning us and making us feel bad about how we're living. But I believe God loves us too much to say, son, daughter, just, you're good. Just stay there, you know. But he's calling us into something new. I have here an, uh, a net, right? And this is what the disciples would use. And they were, 
I'm not a fisherman, just FYI. This is my friend Landon's. This is his net. He's a, he's a true fisherman. But this net, right, represents their livelihood. The disciples, this is everything that they knew. In, in the Bible days, right, they didn't have jobs where they would pay. Sometimes they would get paid for things. But for the most part, everyone would do trading. It would be, I would trade my fish for two loaves of bread. Or I would trade my fish for X, Y, and Z, right? And for them, this is all they've known. And when Jesus says, come and follow me, I will make you fishers of men, what happened was they said, I'm letting go my comfort. Do you guys get the picture? This is the comfort that God is saying that he wants us to let go. For some of us, it's, I've been in this relationship for so long, and God told me that I need to get out of this relationship. But I'm still holding on to it, God, because this is my comfort. Or maybe God said, I need you to go into a small group because you can't do this faith thing by yourself. You need other brothers and sisters that's going to call you out of your sin to allow you to live in the life that I have for you. But if you hold on to this and you don't give it up to me, then my will cannot be done in your life. What I realize is there's two things that happens with a net. The net, right? This is representative of our comfort. But it's also the very thing that ensnares us, the very thing that traps us. I mean, that's the purpose of a net, right? To trap some fish. But some of us, we use the net and subconsciously, maybe even consciously, we're trapping ourselves. Right? Like, okay, God, I want to follow you, but uh, I can't. There's, there's a net. Like, I can't move my leg and whatnot. But the truth of the matter is we can easily just say, God, I leave my comfort and I'm going to follow you. What is that thing that God is telling you that you need to let go of? Leave that comfort behind and pursue after me. Many of us, like I said, we're all in a different journey of faith. And God is calling us into something way more greater than we think is good right now. God doesn't want you to settle for good because he's called you to be great. Amen? Amen. Amen. Third point. Fellow believers help us stay on the path of following Jesus. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10 and 12 says this, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If one of them falls, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. One thing I notice is Jesus, when he first called the two disciples, he called them by twos. But what did he do after? He sent them out by twos. What does this mean? Life is not meant for us to be done alone. Why do we think that we always talk about small groups and how important it is for us to be in a small group? It's important for us to be in community, not so that we can like compare each other's sins and say who's more sinful and and make everyone feel bad about themselves. It's because we really get down to the the real nitty-gritty of it We all just desire to live for God. Is that true? Like we all hope to advance and grow into the men and women that God has called us to be. And small groups is a safe place where we can process, we can talk, we can open up about our lives, and God can allow us to find healing. But God didn't only just allow us to do life together, but he sent us in twos so that we can make a difference in this world. So that we can live on mission. So that so many people can come to know who this Jesus is. But if we just settle with, God, I'm comfortable with right here. I don't want to go to that school that you called me to in the mainland. Or I don't want to go to that person that you told me to pray for because I'm comfortable right here. Can you imagine if the disciples were to say, nah, um, I don't want to follow you. That's kind of weird. I mean, they knew about Jesus. They knew what he was doing. They knew about his ministry and what an honor it was for God to first call the disciples. And when they left, they basically said, hey, dad, I know this is our livelihood. This is how our family eats. This is how our family lives. But we're going to have to let it go. And we're going to have to walk into everything that God or Jesus has called us to. That's pretty much in that day a backhand to the face to a father. That this is the, the royalties that that the father has lived up to from generations to generations. And the disciples are saying, sorry, I'm going to go live and be with Jesus. But something about it allowed them to see that there was something that God was calling them into. It was the unknown. 
And what was it? Like I said earlier, it was uncomfortable. God is calling us, Pearlside Church, from comfort into calling. Did you guys catch that? God is calling us from comfort into calling. We can't stay with just my net and stay with what I'm comfortable with. But Lord, if I want to experience the fullness of life, the one that you talked about, Lord, in the word, God, the ones that I hear testimonies of, but I haven't experienced it for myself, I got to leave a net. So what am I holding on to, Lord, that I need, no, that you know that I, I need to give up to you? One thing I know about Jesus is I don't think he said on his way to Calvary, oh, God, this is uncomfortable. Like, oh, I don't, uh, I don't want to do this, Lord. He actually did. I mean, he had a prayer between God and he said, Lord, if this cup can pass of me where I don't have to die and suffer, like, please let it happen. But if not, if anything, at the end of the day, your will be done in my life. And God said, no, sorry. You're going to have to be martyred. You're going to have to be put on the cross. You're going to have to die. You're going to have to suffer so that everyone after you can have a relationship with me. Do you guys think that Jesus was comfortable with that? Even to the point where he was on the cross. He was on the cross and he, he was calling out to God. But the Bible says that God turned his face away from him. And Jesus said, my Lord, my Lord, why did you forsake me? That moment, he experienced a lack of connection to his father. Church, I want to tell us tonight, if we stay with this net, we're creating that distance between us and our father. I'd rather have this, God, than everything that you have for me. I'm going to sell out, Lord. I'm sorry. I can't go and pray for that person just right now. I can't witness my faith on my campus because you see how the, the religious climate is on the campus. God, that one coworker that's super annoying and, and always mad at me and always irritable, like why would I want to approach that person? They probably just throw it right back in my face. But as believers of Christ, disciples of God, when we let go of our nets, it's communicating to God, God, I trust you with my life. That even if it's uncomfortable, I know that you got me. And I know that I'm going to experience something that I can't even probably even conceive and think about right now. What is God calling you to leave? What is your net that's ensnaring you, that's capturing you, that God wants you to let go of? Number four, following Jesus will always lead to loving others. I love this uh, scripture in John 13, 34 to 35. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. I kind of mentioned a little bit about it. God has called us to go into the marketplace. God has called us to go into the campuses, whatever college campus, high school, middle school campus that you're on. But God has also called us here in the church that there's people around us that are dealing with things that they can't do on their own. And God is calling us to go to that person and love them. I bet right now, if we count to five, you can think about at least one or five people that you know that needs the love of Jesus and needs a touch of him. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. How many of us? Show of hands. There is someone that popped up into your mind. Raise them high. Raise it loud and proud. Amen. God has called you to be the church. Now, when you think about it, what's stopping me from loving that person? What's that insecurity that's stopping me from loving God and loving people? If we say, God, I love you so much, what is he saying to us? Well, then go feed my sheep. God, I love you. I love you. Seriously, like, for real, I love you. I go to church every day. Okay, go feed my sheep. <laughs> it's like, what? We think that we come to the church for God's blessing, which we do, we receive. But God is constantly telling the church that you're not meant to come to Pearlside in Iaea just to hear a word and be like, wow, that was such a good word, and then go about your merry day. But I believe God in this season is challenging us that when you hear a word like this, I need to leave that behind and pursue everything that you have for me outside of this church. Because God wants to use us to make a difference. And you're like, man, what can I do? I'm just, 
I've been only walking with the Lord for X amount of years, or maybe this is my first time here. God will use anybody, anybody that's willing to live for him, anyone that says, I love you, God, he will empower you to do that and go to that person, share the love of God, share the gospel with someone and help them find breakthrough. We all almost rose, rose our hand. We know there's at least one person. We're not saying go reach your entire workplace. Maybe you can. Or your entire campus. God says just one. He left the 99. We're the 99, FYI. Just for the one. The one person outside of the church, outside of the fold, so that we can bring them into a relationship with God. God has called us to love others to love people where they're at, and to help them to find victory. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, we have a testimony tonight, and um, we're talking about following God. And this individual has been on a journey of following God, very much like ourselves. But I think her testimony is something very important for us because it gives and paints a good picture about what the state of the world is going in right now. Even like here locally, nationally, and globally, Maybe you're here tonight, and I believe that this testimony will be something that will really resonate with you. And so, this individual, she is a small group leader here at ProSide Church. She's gone through our high school ministry, and she's also gone in our college ministry. Uh, she works with our community, where we, we have um, the back to school, the blood drives, um, all of the great things we do out in the community. She helps. Be, she's the administrative assistant for that. Um, she's on worship, so maybe you have seen her before. She sang. She's going to sing tonight. She has something for us uh, to be blessed with. Um, but she has a great story. And beyond all the great things that she's done, it's out of an outflow of her relationship with God. Her decision to say, God, I want to follow you and live before you relentlessly. And so here to bring and share our tes her testimony is our very own precious Elihio. So please welcome her to the stage. Yay. Hi again, Sean. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. She's like a little sister to me, you know? I just, I just love that uh, God has allowed us to be in this journey together. One fun fact for us is that actually uh, when I first started our college young adults ministry, in full-time ministry, uh, we were able to work at UH West Oahu. Any owls in the house? Woo! Woo! I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, but yeah, we, we were able to do a lot of uh, ministry together. And even right now, I hope that we can minister to you as well. Um, but Precious, for you, your journey of following God, um, how about you tell us a little bit about how that started off for you? Maybe before the moment that you encountered God and he asked you to follow him, what was life like uh, before that? Yeah, um, life before God, I would describe as hopeless and bleak, you know, um, I grew up in the Philippines, and I grew up in a Christian home, but uh, I understood God religiously, and I, I understood him in a head level and not in a relational level. So, um, you know, I, from a very young age, I've dealt with uh, depression and anxiety and a lot of overthinking. And so, you know, back then, I didn't know what it meant to, like, um, for to spite, fight spiritually and to go through spiritual warfare. And so I was just kind of lost and, you know, every day was um, difficult for me. It was hard to sleep at night. And I was convinced, you know, that the rest of my life was going to look like that. You know, I think that that's the state of where we are in this world, that a lot of people actually do wrestle with mental health. That that's a very real thing that people are struggling with and wrestling with. And Precious, at a very young age, the enemy, he's, he's such a coward. You know, he just wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to take us out while we're young. And Precious was, you know, at once, at a time, right, a victim to what the enemy was trying to do. But the Lord encountered you in a real, real way. And um, how about you tell us a little bit about your moment where you came to God and your, your senses of religiosity has turned into, wow, God, you're actually pursuing a relationship with me. Share us about that. Yeah, I mean, after a long uh, journey of just trying to, you know, figure out my faith or what I even believed and um, going through different, you know, coping methods and um, going to psychologists and trying to help myself and, um, 
you know, it all led me to a dead end. And the same questions of, you know, why, why do I exist, still exist, you know? And, and so I reached a, a dead end and I, um, it was around middle school and high school where um, I came home from school and I was just laying on my bed and I just rem remember feeling so hopeless. It was just like, you know, the last ounce of hope was like um, gone and I wanted to end it all. You know, I, I was thinking of ways to just um, not live anymore because I was tired of just this constant fear of being afraid. And so, um, yeah, I remember at that moment, God um, directed my attention to the Bible. And that, you know, I, in, in retrospect, I know that God was, that was God fighting for me, you know, and, and, and I opened up the Bible and um, I was reading John, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And I kept meditating on that and I gave my faith another chance. Um, but it wasn't until, you know, my family found Pearlside in 2016 where God really um, uh, touched me through community. And so I came in these doors as a youth and I just remember seeing youth just um, worshiping God with all their hearts. And I was like, this is something different, you know, and um, this God must be real. And so that same year, you know, um, there was a youth conference and um, the third day was when I surrendered my life to Christ. And I remember feeling his embrace during worship and I felt him in a tangible way. And in that moment, it was more than enough to convince me to just let go of my nets, to let go of all the doubts and the questions. And um, that was the beginning of me following God and the healing process, yeah. You know, it's, it's so awesome to just hear your story and you know, some of the things right you shared that you coped with, it was uh, high accolade in school. Believe it or not, Precious was, she was a Valley Victorian at IAEA High School. Very, very smart person. And it's like, it's the very people that looks like they have life all put together that are actually the ones that are going through the worst of times. I've had so many friends where like, while I'm scrolling through social media, right? And it looks like their life is like picture perfect. I'm like, wow, this person probably has zero issues. But the moment that you come up to them and you talk to them just a little bit and they open up their lives, you realize that, wow, that's all a facade. And I think for a lot of us here tonight, that might be some of the things that we may wrestle with, that all I have is face value. I don't think anyone should know all the things that I'm going through, the mental health issues, the things I know that I need to actually get professional help. And you shared a little bit about that too, right, that you had to actually go ahead and leave your comfort and, and seek professional help. But God has met you in a real, real way. And so tell us, what, did, what, did God, uh, what is God calling you into now? Because the truth is, when we walk in our faith with God, he doesn't want us to just stay where we're at, but he's constantly calling us into the next thing, the next season in our lives. And so in this current season, what is possibly one net that God is calling you to let go of? Yeah, um, I'm actually a senior right now in um, UHOS. And so one thing that, that God um, has been uh, encouraging me in and confirming throughout these years is that I'm called into the area of mental health. And so I'm studying psychology right now and I'm hoping you know, after I graduate that I go into a clinical psych program. And um, you know, my, my heart and God's heart for that is to, to bridge mental health and the gospel and to find that middle ground and um you know and so it's so just i'm i'm so grateful that that god has allowed me to go through all of those things because if it wasn't for him allowing um you know all those hardships to happen and him breaking through that um i wouldn't have the passion that i have now you know in that that area and so yeah that's that's awesome. The, the very thing, the very net that entangled you is the very net that God wants to use for, I mean, the very net that he wants you to help others find victory into as well. And so you can only really find that when you first say, God, I'm willing to follow you. 
God, I'm willing to give my life up to you so that you can use me to make a difference in this world. And so I, I just love seeing her story and just being able to be with her in the, in the journey as well. Um, but God has allowed you to also be a small group leader. We have some pictures that we can show of just the things that God has done in her life. Um, my small group. Yeah, it's her small group. And then that's the youth worship team. And then our worship team. <laughs> Like, and then, yeah, and then I serve in, and work with community, too, and I've been grateful for just the opportunity to learn from everybody and seeing God, like, move in practical ways and, like, really seeing God's hands and feet, you know, actively pursuing people on the ground and so. And we can just talk forever about <laughs> the things that Precious has, has been doing, but imagine if there wasn't a moment where she said, God, I want to leave my comfort she could have ended it all. But because she said no, she left her net and she pursued God, look at the impact of her life and what she's doing in her community. And venture to say the things that you're going to do in this world and how God is going to use your life. And I believe that a lot of us here today are encouraged by this testimony. And so what is one parting shot that you can share with everyone tonight? Yeah, um, you know, if you're sitting on these seats and you came in with something, maybe a hardship, or I don't know if it's your mental health or just financially or relationally with your family, just know that God sees and God understands completely, you know, and um, not only does God understand, he doesn't stop there, but he offers hope, he offers freedom, and um, God is faithful and God is relentless in pursuing us. He relentlessly pursued me, you know, all throughout these years, and. Um, and I can, I can sit here and stand here and say that, that God will never fail you. And letting go of whatever comfort or nets that we're holding on to is so worth it. It's so worth it because this is a God that will never leave. This is a God whose love doesn't change. And he's worth it. God is so worth it. And he will never stop fighting for us until we say yes. So... Amen. Amen. Well, Precious has a song that she has prepared for us tonight, and she's going to bless us with it. Um, but before she does, uh, she's going to go ahead and I'm going to ask you if you could pray for our congregation tonight and for, for some of us that maybe there's something that we need to let go of. And so if you could please bless us with a prayer. Yes. Go ahead. I invite us all to bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for drawing us near to you in this time, Lord God. Um, even uh, for the person that just came here for the first time or we've been coming for a while, we thank you, Lord, that you've meant for us to be here, God, and that you want to encounter us, God, with your love right now. So I pray, Lord God, for everybody struggling right now, God, with um, Annette, God, that they're holding on to, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you give us the courage, God, and your spirit to just let go and let you take control, God, because you know what's best for your creation. It's you that heals, God. It's you that guides, Lord. Jesus, you are the prize, God. And so we surrender to you, God. Give us the courage, Lord, to surrender to you and give it all to you, Lord, and to lay it all down just like you've laid your life down, God, on the cross. So we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, precious. How about we all stand? We're going to go into a moment of worship. But before we do, can we get that net back up here? Thank you, Vian. Thank you. We said earlier that this net represents the thing that God wants us to let go. And I believe God says, I don't want you to be tied down by this anymore. Nets are used to be captured, capturing things, capturing fish, right? I believe tonight God wants to capture your heart. And I believe he wants to do something miraculous in us. But it starts with us saying, God, I'm going to leave this net. I'm going to follow you. So I want us to think about what is that thing, God, that I, you know I need to let go of? No condemnation, all love. God is inviting us tonight to say, I'm ready to take it for you from you. But you have to be the one to choose to say, I give it up to you. And so as we go into this time of worship, I want us to reflect Think about what is that thing that I do need to, in fact, let go of. And after we're done, we're going to pray. And so, worship team, if you could lead us.